Hey everybody, welcome back to Auto Scholar Mr. B. I'm Mr. B, and today we have our next project on our Project E30 that we are going to complete. Now, last video I did, we took the old carpet out of the vehicle, cleaned it, and re-dyed it, and got it looking super good. So now we have uh, a little bit more work to do before we put the carpet in. And this is one of those things that's very optional, and it's something I wanted to do because I'm going with a a much different engine that was in this car before. It's going to be louder and it's going to be hotter. So I'm wanting to do some insulation on this car. Now the factory E30 has some tarboard insulation in there and some of it is chipped away. It's it's not exactly the best stuff to insulate this car with. It's fairly heavy and uh, since 1987 when this car was put out they have had some major breakthroughs in automotive insulation and one of them is Dynamat. Well, when Dynamat came out very expensive and of course there's some knockoffs and this is actually what we're going to be using today is a knockoff insulation panels for our project E30. These right here are fairly cheap. I think I got 65 square feet for about $50 or so and uh, that will definitely cover the areas that I'm looking to cover and what this is is it's a, 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 a butylene plastic self-adhesive and it has a heat barrier in here as well. So we're going to go all the way up the firewall, all the way down where the seats are and everything else, and cover this all up in this material. It's hopefully going to give us a little less noise, vibration, and harshness uh, when we get the vehicle finished. And it's not going to keep so much heat in the vehicle. Uh, I don't know if y'all know this, but I live in the southern United States. It gets very hot. It's going to be a black car with a dark interior, and we're going to have a very large engine in here. So development of heat is going to be a problem. And this is one of the things that I'm putting in here to uh, pretty much get rid of some of that heat. So this whole box, 65 square feet, I think weighs about 20 pounds. So as far as it's not like the tar boards, you're not adding a whole lot of weight to the vehicle. We're not taking away from the performance. Um, really, a spare tire weighs more than, than the insulation that we're putting in this car. So if you have a performance-minded build, this is still worth doing, in my opinion. So... The biggest thing is preparation on this. So we have everything out of the interior of this car. Dash is out, carpet's out, uh, seats of course are out. And what we've done is we looked at the interior. It had some surface rust on it. We went ahead and just wire brushed down the surface rust of bare metal and put you know two coats of paint on there just to keep any more rust from forming. These E30s a lot of times, especially the ones that the coupes, with the windows that crack open, they develop leaks and they rusted right around the area where the back seat met the uh, floor pan. So you wanna make sure you don't put this stuff in over the rust. One, it's not gonna stick well, and two, it can actually cause the rust to get more moisture and spread through the car. So uh, definitely wanna get every surface clean. You wanna wipe down with mineral spirits, carburetor cleaner, brake cleaner, something like that. That way the adhesive can uh, grab onto the metal and you don't end up with an issue like this. Now, uh, you know, the carpet is gonna go over this, so it's not like it's gonna slide around or go anywhere, even if the adhesive would have to lift, but it's just always nice to have this completely flat on there. That way uh, we don't have any air bubbles or anything there causing any issues. So let me take the camera off the tripod. I'm gonna take it over here to the E30 and I'll show you what we're working with and I'll show you how to put one of these sheets in. Okay, so here is the interior of the vehicle. As you can tell, we have refinished the floor pans. They look fantastic. We did have some rust buildup, just a little surface rust, nothing structural, but we went ahead and took care of that. You will have to kind of work around these wiring harnesses in the floor. We did take the air vents also that go to the back of the car off as well, just to get a good flat plane to put these uh, insulation panels in. So, uh, this job really shouldn't take that long. I'm going to start, I'm going to go all the way up here to where the rebar of the dash touches the firewall. And I'm going to just work my way down from here all the way to the back because it's going to be easier to edge trim back here than it is all the way up there underneath the dash. So I do plan to pretty much go over the tunnel as well. You want to make sure that you're not covering up any bolt holes. You're not covering up any seat anchors, anything like that. Uh, if you do, you can just slot the material or cut a hole in the material to where like this seat bolt will go through. So very important there. You don't want to be looking for a bolt to put back in and the hole being covered up by this and you not knowing it. So map everything out, take good pictures, and 
Uh, it's really not that difficult to put in. We just lay it in kind of like, like tiling a floor. And it's okay if it overlaps a little. It's okay if it gaps a little. That's, that's perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we are in the passenger floorboard area of the E30. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start and go right on the firewall. And so I have a little bit of insulation here. I'm gonna keep this here. I, I always try to keep the factory insulation kind of intact. I'm gonna take this panel right here and I'm gonna try to slide it up in there. And uh, another thing you're gonna need is one of these. It is a uh, roller tool. I got the upgraded one. It was like seven or eight dollars on Amazon and it's got a bearing in there and it works pretty well. So I test fit first. I'm gonna take this, kind of slide it in there. Make sure I don't have to cut it. Got some wires here. We don't want to wire over, so just kind of tuck those away. And I want to slide it up in there, just like that. And again, we're doing a test fit. And just kind of mold it in there. And that looks like it's gonna fit pretty well. So then we're gonna take off our backing tape. This stuff is sticky, but it's not too crazy sticky. It's more like a pressure sensitive adhesive. I'm just gonna peel the paper about halfway off. And make sure your wires, you don't get anything caught in here. This insulation is kind of tricky. Doesn't have to be perfect. Line this up just like that, and then we're going to work it down from the top with our roller. It conforms to curves pretty well. We're just working this in. It's okay if it uh, wrinkles or Stuff like that, it's fine. Again, the carpet's gonna cover all this up, so perfection is not really needed. This is pretty easy, anybody can do this. So if you get an air pocket here, you'll see this little rip there, and I've got some tape that we'll go over with that. Some aluminum tape, just to seal that up. And we'll continue to work this down. It's fairly repositionable. It's not like vinyl wrap or anything to where it's too crazy hard to work with. tears you can put another piece over it As you see here it's starting to tear a little bit so I'll just cut another piece and put that over there it's just because there was a indention here so we roll it in And again, if you have to cut, just use a razor blade or a razor knife. Even a pair of scissors will cut this pretty well. And that's our first piece in. And laying in the next piece, you're just gonna wanna do this like tile. Okay, we're just tiling across. You can put a thinner piece in here to fill this area that you're not gonna be able to get. You can overlap this. I wouldn't overlap it too much just because it'll make things kind of lumpy underneath the carpet but it's more time consuming than it is anything. And just feel your hand over. If you feel like you need to re-roll a spot or something like that, just go ahead and hit it with the roller. And this should really do a whole lot for noise, vibration, harshness, and heat inside the car. 
Okay, so here's the end result here. We have everything up cover. I'll probably put a couple of other strips and everything over here. Might go up the back, see it a little bit more. Um, and I'm going to take off the door panels and regulators and get the doors. And I'm probably going to do the trunk and the roof as well. But looks like we went through about a little over half of the box to do this. And so I've got about twice this left. So, uh, you know, the, the, the price, this was, I looked it up. It's, it's $60. I think I paid for the, the box in the box. It said it, it covers 52 square feet. I think I said 65 earlier, but that's what I paid for the box. So I just got my numbers swapped around here. I'll put the link in the description so you can see, uh, exactly the kind that I got. But, uh, you know, so this is definitely, it only took probably about between cleaning the pan, resealing it and install, I'd say three or four hours. And I think it's going to make a huge difference in the drivability of the vehicle. Okay, everybody, hope you enjoyed the install video of the insulation on this car. Again, I really feel it makes a big difference. It's a good finishing touch for the interior of your vehicle. So I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, VK. Uh, you can interact with me there. I post a lot of stuff there that I can't post on YouTube. And again, don't forget to like the video and subscribe if it taught you anything. And uh, I also have the uh, carpet restoration video that I'm gonna put down in the description and show you how I redyed the carpet. 35 year old carpet in this E30 and looks fantastic. Did it for about $20, so don't miss that. And of course, keep in touch with me. Uh, we're going to be going through a whole restoration on this E30 with a complete powertrain swap. We're going to be doing some crazy things with this car, but we want to make it look like BMW did this and we want to make a very clean install. So we're going to be doing some really technical stuff with this vehicle. It's going to be great. And as always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on Auto Scholar Mr. Beacon.